So uh, what do you think that the teachers, uh, uh, how can the teachers around the whole world, because we have audience from all around the world, um, embrace the Montessori uh, methodology today? After so, 100 years. <laughs> Yeah, and, and this is, you know, this has been a big focus of, of my work, and this is what I ultimately what I want to do. Uh, I've decided, you know, I'm 43, I've got, you know, a good maybe, I don't know how many years left, quite a lot, hopefully, and I want to dedicate my time to this exact same thing. And uh, the point is that there are lots of teachers out in the world, and I've worked all over the world. I've worked in France, in Korea, in India, in Nepal, Japan, uh, lots of places. And this is no disrespect to any teachers who are watching this. But 99.9% .9 of schools around the world are teacher at the front, children sitting in chairs, teacher with a document saying from the principal that says, you must teach this document. And the teacher says, OK, it says I must say this. The teacher says, OK, guys, we're going to learn about this. So I'm going to tell you everything. And if you remember everything I've said, then that's great. You're going to write that down. I'm going to test you on Friday. And if you get everything right, then you're a grade A star student. You go for it. You're amazing. And the teachers, bless them. They're doing a wonderful job. They're trying their best. Um, but there's another way. And I'm not saying that every school in the world needs to click its fingers and become Montessori, because that's not possible. The, the materials are hard to find. They're expensive. Sometimes there's not space. But what Montessori did, which was amazing, and this is why I'm sold, and this is why this is going to be my life's work and already is, is because her philosophy, the philosophy of what education should be, and the ultimate goal of, of, of her pedagogy and her philosophy was around empowering children and making them into change makers with purpose and impact, and giving them the, the knowledge that they knew that even though that there was a war or there was some kind of disaster happening or the oceans were dirty or the air was polluted and children often feel, you know, in lots of circumstances that those issues are too big or too far away for them to have an impact. The Montessori philosophy tells you that you need to empower that child to understand that they can make a difference no matter how small. You know, if they put a poster in the local library window and one piece of litter is picked up, just one, then they've made a difference. That's fine. That's no problem. And later down the track, they become Greta Thunberg and, you know, they're changing the whole world, as it were, or they become, uh, you know, Malala, who decides to give women in Afghanistan empowerment. Those kind of stories and those kind of theories that sit deep within the pedagogy and the philosophy um, are, are really, really important. And I think that many schools around the world that can't get the materials or they can't get the training or they can't afford to have the space, they can change the way that they see education themselves and pass it on to the children. So rather than the, the teacher dictating what the children need to know, to be totally honest with the children and say, look, you know, I'm the teacher, but I actually don't know everything. And I don't know the answer to all of your questions. And it's not my job to know that. My job is actually just to, to inspire you and then allow you to go free and give you freedom within limits and be your guide. You know, I'm going to try to make your dreams become a reality as much as I possibly can, but I can't promise you that it will work. We probably will fall down, we'll make mistakes along the way, but that's totally okay. Because from mistakes came great, you know, great deals of learning, and we all know that. Um, and that the smallest adaptation to lots of philosophies and pedagogies around the world and classroom setups and, and school, you know, uh, the mechanisms of schools all over the world, I think Montessori can have that influence over those schools and can change the way that children see, see the world. That connectivity, the empowerment, the impact, the purpose, those things are unbelievable. And the reason I say that is I've seen it with my own two hands, you know, my own two eyes. I've seen it in the Himalayas where uh, there are schools that are dust ridden holes where there's really nothing going on. And you've probably seen them yourself when you've done all of your work in Africa. And just by the teacher changing the way the classroom runs or giving the children a bit of freedom or bringing the outside inside, you know, all those wonderful things that Montessori did when she said, you know, if you can't take the children to the world, bring the world to them. Like, you know, let's do that. Let's take this on because um, the more we spread this wonderful message in Montessori around the world, I think the, the bigger difference we'll see in fixing some of the biggest problems we have in the world today because, our job is to empower the youth today to solve the problems that we've created. And uh, I see that as, as one of the biggest uh, you know, achievements that Montessori has. And her legacy will probably live on until, as those changes happen and as those problems are fixed.